everybody, and welcome back to In Future Tense. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that came up through Facebook. How much should an artist get paid? Now there are different types of art you have to think about in the world of art. There is illustration, there is directing, there is writing, there is filming, there is sound, there is light. There's all kinds of different ways that an artist can work in the world that we live in, especially in Hollywood. Now the question is, what are they worth? Now there are unions to protect people and make sure they get tons of money. There are people who demand lots of money and there are people who expect lots of money. Now what makes a person successful? What makes a person worth more than another person? What makes a price fair? What makes a price unfair? Well first of all, I as an artist, whether it be writing, filming, directing, editing, whatever it is, this is an art for me, think that you should only take what you do. When I charge people for services, I've done uh, uh, legal document preparation, I've done security, I've done writing, I've done directing, I've done all kinds of little projects, and I always charge what I think is fair, not what I think I'm worth. Because if I charge what I'm worth, two things would happen. One, I'd never get a job because even though I am worth a lot, I'm not recognized enough to get the clientele that I want. And two, nobody would want to pay it because, again, I'm too fresh. So being demanding and expecting will not get me a job, even if I am worth it. So what are you worth? What do you do? These are two different different. These are two different things that you have to think about when you're asking for a price. Now, artistry illustration can take different amounts of time depending on whether you're drawing, uh, doing it on a computer, um, painting. Uh, there are different types of artistry as far as illustration goes. How should you charge with that? Well, if you're working on a computer, what kind of programs do you have? How much do those programs cost? If you're working with uh, pencils, markers, paint, how much do those things cost you? Uh, paper cost. I mean, all these things add up. Canvases. Uh, what kind of things do you have to use? These are the types of things you should consider for a price. Now, should you charge, you know, $100 per picture? It depends. Now, a lot of people have a scale. Small picture, medium picture, large picture, huge picture, ginormous picture. They have different ways of charging based on how big their projects are. Okay, now we're talking. What I think is fair for an illustrator to charge, and this is something that I am consistently frustrated with, because I ask people to do work for me, and I have an artist, as an artist, have written and come, and come up with characters, and I do not have the ability to draw characters, but then I go and ask for someone to draw them for me, like, we'd like $300 for that? And I'm looking at a picture that's maybe the size of my hand, and they want $300 for it, and I understand it's work. I understand uh, you have time limitations and you have other things going on, but $300 for a picture the size of my hand? Really? You know, I can understand if I'm paying you $300 for a life-size portrait of my character, but why $300 for a picture of my hand? And this is not an exaggeration. This is an actual example of something that I've come across. Now, what is fair? Time. How much do you get paid for your time? Me? I work security. I think that's the best way to measure time because there are jobs where they pay you fairly based on your qualifications. As an artist, what are your qualifications? How professional are you? What styles do you do? These are all things you should take into consideration. As an armed guard, right now, there's a job that I could take $27 an hour, working campus security along with the police in that area. That's how much I'm worth per hour as a security guard. Am I working for that? No. I won't say what I'm getting paid, but I'm not getting paid 27 bucks an hour. And I'm not complaining about that because that's fair for what I do. So for what you do as an illustrator, what are you worth per hour? This is what you need to figure out. Now, how much does it cost you? You have a program for your computer. Okay. Is that a one-time cost or are you paying a monthly fee? If you're paying a one-time cost, don't be charging people after you've paid off your, your program. Pay off your program, lower your prices. Make it so that you're accessible, so you can get more jobs in the long run, make more money. That sounds good to me. 
you know, if I was an illustrator, that is what I would do. Now, if you use any painted stuff, find out how much every bit costs, how much it costs to replace, and make sure that every time you work, you're earning enough to replace a quarter of what you're using. So you have a marker set that costs you $35, $25, whatever it is. Charge a quarter of that, plus your time. And then if you have a lot of things going on and you need to make priority, maybe raise your prices a little bit for the new customers coming in to try and limit how many projects you get so you're not always so busy. And then leave it there. Don't keep bumping it up. Now painting is another thing, but the same thing goes. Acrylics, watercolors, uh, uh, all these different types of uh, paints and pastels and things that you can use charge a quarter of what they're worth to replace per customer. That way every four customers you have enough to pay for new product. Now, as a director or as a, uh, a film star, what should you be charging? Now there's unions for this, again, and they charge enormous amounts of money based on how much you do. So if you're a newbie, what should you be charging? Me, I think you should be charging gas, 10 bucks an hour, or whatever the minimum wage is in, in your state, and enough for food. Keep it basic. Start working your way up, become a B-level actor, start charging about you know, 15 to 17 dollars an hour. You know, that'll pay for your time, it'll pay for your food, it'll pay for your, your costs, and uh, maybe you have to get a side job, but you're still working your way up. now. You get to a place where you can do anything, you're very versatile, you've proven yourself, set a price per project, you know, whatever you're going to do, figure out how much time is going to go into it and then charge twice that. That's what I would do as an artist, because that way you're making what you need and then you're making what you're worth. I think that's fair. There's different types of artists who should get paid different amounts. The problem is we put ourselves into one bracket. I am an artist. I should get paid this. Not necessarily. I have different skills. I have different things I can do. I can direct, I can write, I can film, I can organize a website. I can do all these different things. How much am I worth? Me? I work on YouTube. I'm working for free right now. If I start getting paid, I want to get paid through sponsors. So I want to get paid what people think I'm worth. You know, I've directed a few projects and I've gotten paid. You know how much I get paid? Enough for gas based on a lift price and enough for food. I think that's fair. Now, I've also done some writing projects. How much do I get paid for that? Well, I generally charge about $15 an hour. Pays for food, pays for whatever I need as far as resources, and that pays for me to get the job done. Where I feel satisfied, and I'm not feeling like I'm getting underpaid or underappreciated. As an artist, as a creator, as a writer, as a Whatever. Make sure you're charging a fair price. And remember, when you're doing something as an artist, you're doing it for society. Maybe you're doing it for yourself at first, but in the end of the day, your stuff is not going to last unless you're doing it for a purpose. Unless you're giving to other people, unless you're sharing with the world. So try to think that even though you may get clientele for $300 for a hand-sized picture, you could be getting $300 with a lot more clients for that hand-sized picture if you'd just be willing to take what you really do. I'm not saying I'm pissed off at anybody. I'm not saying that I won't pay $300. I'm just saying it's not fair that I as an artist have to ask another artist to bend over backwards for me and then they basically tell me to go suck it up because they're not willing to work for less than I'm worth. Because I'm worth a lot of money too. But I don't go around saying, well, I guess I'm just going to have to not ever give my writing to an artist. I'll go take some art classes. That takes away from your guys' jobs. As, another, as an artist, I have a potential to provide other artists with jobs. As an artist, you have the ability to provide other artists with a living, breathing illustration and character that they otherwise would not be able to see. We are here to help each other out as human beings, if not as artists. Try and think about the fact that when somebody like myself comes along and asks you for help, it's not easy for us to share our character. It's not easy for us to share our ideas with you. We're willing to pay because we understand you need the money because you are putting your time into something. But we're not going to get paid for sharing that with you. It's a two-way street as an artist. When you work for someone who doesn't have any ideas and they just want 
kind of a thing written up or done, you know? You're bringing something to life that they can't imagine themselves with a skill set that you have and they do not. Being an artist is a gift that should be used responsibly. Being an artist is something that gives you power. And with great power comes great responsibility. My name is James Hahn. I'm a writer, director, photographer, choreographer, different things. I want to see a future where we can all work together, get what we're worth, but also make sure other people can see their dreams come alive. Let's look for an intense future together, and let's remember whenever we do something, we're looking in future tense. Thanks for joining me today. I hope this has been helpful. See you later. Thank you guys for joining me on another vlog from In Future Tense. It's always exciting to share my life with you, and I hope you'll join me again next time. If you like what you saw, please go ahead and click subscribe or the like button. And if you didn't like what you saw, please feel free to leave some feedback uh, down below in the comment section so I can try and improve my content to make it more interesting and more suited to what you're looking for. We're all moving forward. Let's have an intense future.